Good morning, my name's Steve Bishop. I'm from the Caterpillar Backo Loader Product Support Team and today we're going to look at the daily and weekly maintenance on a CAT Backo Loader. So all the actions I'm going to talk about today are all in the Operation and Maintenance Manual which is stored in the left-hand storage compartment of the cab. So the first task of the daily checks is the oil levels. Now, to make sure we get it right, make sure the machine's on firm level ground, the front bucket's on the ground, and really importantly, stabiliser legs are raised and the rear bucket is curled all the way around. If that rear bucket's not curled round, your hydraulic level will not be right. Okay, on this uh, F2 series machine, the hood release is just inside the cab. Up in the engine bay, there's a few things we need to check. First thing is the coolant level. So the coolant is down here. You can see that the level is midway, which is good, so that's fine. Uh, next is the engine oil. So the dipstick is down here. We'll pull this out. It's always best to wipe it first and recheck it. Do like this. Yep, that level's fine. If you needed to fill the oil up, this is the engine fill. Next thing to check is the transmission oil level, and that's this purple one here. You can check the transmission when cold. That gives you an idea if there's enough oil in there to start the machine. But the time you check the oil for the transmission correctly is when the engine is running. Now it only has to be running for a minute or so, just enough to circulate the oil around the torque converter and the oil cooler just to make sure the level is correct. The oil level actually drops on the transmission when the engine is running. So it may seem high if you don't check it while the engine is running. So let's start the engine and check the transmission oil level. See, it says check with warm oil, and the level is right in the middle. Okay, the next thing to check on the, uh, the list is the hydraulic oil level. And there's a, there's a gauge on the top here which shows you the exact level. Now remember earlier on I told you that you have to have the machine in the right position. Make sure that rear bucket is curled round otherwise this will be incorrect. Okay, if you actually look here at the gauge on the top of the hydraulic tank, you'll see that the oil level is low and it needs topping up. Okay, topping up the oil. Use the oil fill. So we have to remove the top. Like this. Let's put that somewhere clean. This is uh, fresh cat oil. So we'll just keep topping it up and watch the gauge. So the gauge is starting to move. And there we go. We're into a safe area for the oil now. Just put the cap back on, nice and secure, so it doesn't spill. Okay, for an easy reckoner for underneath the hood, there's a nice decal here. Uh, this shows all of the, uh, the fluid level places to check. It also shows what we're going to do next, which is greasing the machine. It shows a parallel lift, shows a single tilt, 
the swing frame area and the rear of the machine and all the greasing points. There's one thing we haven't checked underneath the hood here, is the air cleaner. Now normally that's only checked when required. There's a warning lamp on the dash. When that comes on it means it's time to service the filter. So you don't really have to go into this area every day. But while we're here I'm going to show you. So to get to the air cleaner you remove these four clips and you slide this compartment off like that, place it up out of the way. So the large filter is the primary filter. So we'll remove this. You can see this is, is fairly clean. There's no real contaminants in there. The foam is in good condition on both sides. There's no cuts or rips or damage, which is good. Now a lot of people, uh, cleaning filters, they want to bang the filter. Don't bang the filter. Banging the filter is bad for it. You can start splitting the foam, you can damage the pleats. And if this is damaged, you're going to get dust going into your engine, which is not good. So that's the primary filter. There is a secondary backup filter, which is a safety filter. It's a small filter, which is in the, in the end here. Same again. Check the pleats are in good condition. Make sure all the rubber is in good condition. This is your backup filter. This is your safety filter. If this is missing or damaged, you are going to cause damage to your engine. Now we'll put this back in because it's all clean and good. Pushes back in nicely in there. Filter goes back in there. Put the hose in. Goes back there. And clip back into place. Like that. So let's get the machine into position to be able to grease it properly. Okay, let's get this machine in position. So we need to create the bucket so it's uh, face down, so we can get to the grease points on the end of the loader arms. So let's put that there like that. And the rear of the machine, let's put the uh, stabiliser legs down, let's make sure we're stable. Release the boom lock. And we'll stretch the rear of the machine out. There we go, that gives us access to everything on the rear of the machine too. So we we'll turn the engine off now. Go get the grease gun. So this is where we recommend that you store the grease gun. Okay, one grease joint that's usually missed is the bottom of the MP cylinder bucket. You always remember this one. Okay, moving on up the machine. Bottom of the link cylinder. We go to the uh, loader cylinder. Again, okay, watching for grease coming out, and it is. Front tilt, let's wipe that clean. Yeah. Center pin. bottom of the uh, lift cylinder. And up to the end of the link pin. Now we need to climb up for this one. It's actually two points just underneath the hood, which is the top of the, the uh, loader tow pin. So we push that up. 
Okay, so the uh, grease point I'll put up here is just on the top of the tube here. There's another one on the opposite side. Don't forget you've got to do all of the other side of the machine as well. So we'll do this one first. Okay, and there's one more here on the other end of the tilt cylinder we didn't do. And that's done. Moving to the rear of the machine, we have the swing frame area to grease. So, start down here with the uh, cylinders. Lots of the grease bubbling up around the back. The other end of the cylinder. Yeah, it's grease coming out there. The swing pin in the middle. Yeah. Okay, boom lock. Top swing joint. This machine has powered side shift, so there's a cylinder up here also to grease. That didn't take much. Don't forget the other end. And while we're here, boom foot. Again, don't forget the other side of the machine, it's exactly the same. Okay, working down the rear of the machine, top end of the uh, boom cylinder, which is quite high up, it's reachable. And on the opposite side is the stick cylinder. Moving on to the other end of the stick cylinder. This joint is on the opposite side. Moving on to the bucket cylinder. End of the bucket cylinder. And a link. Bottom of the link. Stick nose. Okay, let's bottom end of this link. So where's that grease going? Ah, there it is. There's one thing everybody misses on this machine, it's the quick coupler. If you don't grease the coupler, it will seize up eventually. So you need to get some grease onto that. Go. This machine's a quick coupler, so there's no other pins here to grease. Another check to do is to make sure your stabiliser feet are in good condition. So you're checking this is in good condition, there's no wear. If you've got street pads fitted, make sure they're in good condition. These bolts aren't loose or damaged. And also there's no mud or debris around this area. Uh, if debris builds up around this area, it can get inside and start damaging the cylinder. So if there's mud in there, you know, jet wash it out. You can get a bar inside, clean any mud out of there, make sure it's all clean around here.
make sure it's in a good condition. There are a few more things left on the uh, daily check to do. Uh, we've got the backup alarm check, there's the, uh, the service brake check, and there's a seatbelt test. So the first one is the uh, backup alarm. So that's quite simple. You just key on, wait for all that to go quiet. Now, all you need to do is put the machine into reverse. I can hear that, it's working, that's fine. So we know that's working fine. So next, we'll check the seat belt. So the seat belt's on the side of the seat, just make sure everything's clean and in good condition. Put the seat belt on, click it into place, it fastens nicely, release the seat belt, put it away. Then we know that's working fine. Last check that we're going to do at the moment is the service brake check. Now the service brake check does involve the machine moving potentially, so make sure you're in a good environment where there's no people around you, you're not going to crash into anything at all. Uh, what we're going to do is do a drive-through test in third gear. So you have to make sure that the gear is in number three. So turn that to number three. If it was a manual gear, you'd put it into manual gear number three. We're going to start the machine, press hard on the brake, and then slowly increase the RPM. The machine should not move in third gear. Okay, so we'll start the machine. Nobody around us, nothing dangerous. Apply the service brake, release the handbrake, push it into forward third, and then slowly increase the RPM. The machine should not move. There we go. Brakes are working perfectly. Last thing to check are the tyre pressures. Now in the OMM there are some charts that give you the uh, the tyre pressures for this particular machine. Now these are the tyres that were shipped with the machine. They may have been changed in the, in the, uh, the machine's life and they may have different tyres that were fitted onto here. So we always recommend going and looking in the manufacturer's uh, manual to see what their pressures they recommend for this machine. So that's the end of the, uh, the daily checks. So we can put the operation and maintenance manual away. And there you have it. That's all you need to do on your backer loader on a daily basis to keep it in good running condition.